Hello everybody, my name is Nakia Artis and today I will be discussing a short story that I read by Yodora Valti, which is titled, Why I Live at the P.O. The story narrates how the narrator ended up living at the P.O. after disagreeing with her family. The writer basically speaks about the narrator who is just identified as sister and she lives with her mother who is referred as mama. She lives with her grandfather who is referred to as Papa Daddy. And she lives with her uncle who is referred to as Uncle Rondo. However, when her sister Stella Rondo returns, after separating with her husband, Mr. Whittaker, she ensures that the family turns against sister and she actually seceded. But in this story, so many things are demonstrated like social, cultural, and economic issues that was happening in that time frame. Racism. Due to the Great Depression, racism became a major problem in the United States in the 1930s. Racism has become a problem, especially between the whites and African Americans, because whites believe that the African Americans did not deserve the same jobs that they did. However, a lot of things took place that was like, you know, um, basically crimes, lynching of African Americans and other things. The story highlights the aspect of racism when the narrator refers to the workers as the N-word. So they did not use the word workers, they used the N-word to identify the workers in that story and in, in why I live in the PO, which basically identifies in the story as racism. So basically, it immediately lets me know that this story is set in a timeline of when racism was active. I did in the story kind of sense um, the after effects of slavery, which basically we all know that slavery was abolished in 1865. Most people were kept as slaves and they were African Americans after. The story confirms and represents this aspect of American society when the narrator states that mama turned both workers loose. But again, they didn't use the word workers. They used the word, the N-word, the N-word. Mama turned the workers loose, replaced the word workers with the N-word, and that is what they used in this story. Also, also, you know, in the story, I basically got, you know, a sense of the economic analysis and representation of unemployment. The story also highlights that the unemployment problem in the 1940s, you know, was that the United States struggled with unemployment. The issue, the issue is highlighted in the story when Papa Daddy tells, the, tells the, the narrator who is sister that he got her the post office job due to his influence within the government. The fact that Papa Daddy had to use his influence in the government, you know, um, basically shows that it wasn't easy to just go out and get a job. Um, you had to basically probably, you know, know someone or be affiliated with some people and, you know, to be able to work. And basically, you know, Papa Daddy will have to use his influence for the narrator to secure a job at the PO. Also in the story, you know, it was a demonstration of, you know, scarcity of goods or items. In the 1940s, when the story was written, were characterized by, you know, the wars in the United States which was, you know, World War II, the Cold War, and the Holocaust that happened. Due to the events, you know, most items and products became scarred, you know, um, as a result of the scarcity of some items and products, the government, you know, made it that, you know, certain things were affordable. So the story highlights the economic issue when the narrator struggles to divide two chickens amongst five people. So again, in the story, during the time when they were, you know, cooking the chicken, you know, it was two chickens, five people, two chickens, 
and five people. So basically, they had to split the chicken between sister, who is the narrator, Celerano, who is the sister that came back with her child that she had with Mr. Woodtaker. That's three people. And then with Uncle Rondo and Papa Daddy, you know? So um, in the addition of Stella Rondo's child seemed to have complicated, you know, basically split into two chickens, which, you know, even if Stella Rondo's child wasn't present, basically, they will be splitting the two chickens amongst four people, which, you know, sound like it might have been slightly easier, but it also shows the struggle that was going on during that time frame of that the story was written. And... Um, they basically demonstrated that part by using the stretch in this passage. The narrator is highlighting how tough the economic situation of the period resulted, resulted in the scarcity of initial items like food. You know, the cultural analysis and representation of the story, basically, um, they used a radio um, in this story. A radio that was passed on from Uncle Rondo to Sister. And when, you know, sister was ready to leave the home due to so many arguments um, based upon the, you know, the arrival of Stella Rondo, her sister, she decided that she wanted to take that radio. But that radio was taken from Stella Rondo years back um, by Uncle Rondo. And he gave it to sister. So as sister was leaving, she decided to take that radio and that radio meant so much in the home because it was a way of them keeping up what we, with what was going on in the community and overall the world, you know? So the radio basically was a representation of cultural analysis, you know? Um, the radio represented culture to me, basically. You know, music, music comes from the radio. Um, news, current events um, comes from that radio. Um, what was going on amongst African Americans and the white Americans was told through that radio. So by sister taking that radio when she decided she wanted to leave and no longer live there, it kind of reflects on how the family will keep up what is going on culturally in the world. The story is a reflection of the events during the period of the late 30s and the early 40s. And the corruption case involved major government officials. Again, initially, the narrator states that Papa Daddy is very rich. Um, I kind of didn't really understand that part, but that is what was narrated. And when Papa Daddy brought, it's a possibility that you know, even though they don't discuss this in the story, it's a possibility that Papa Daddy probably bribed, you know, um, the government officials to get um, his granddaughter a job at the PO. And if he didn't bribe, he just simply used his influence. He simply used his influence on getting his granddaughter a job at the PO. And, you know, it worked. The story is a reflection of the major issues affecting the United States during that time frame as well. For instance, the story reflects on the issue of shooting or gun violence, which has been affected in the United States for a long time. And the story reflects this problem when the narrator states that the habit of her uncle drinking a bottle of prescription on the 4th of July is as sure as shooting. The statement means shooting becomes a common a common occurrence in the country around that time. Remember, there was lynching going on, a lot of shooting, um, a lot of racism um, that I spoke, you know, about not too long ago. And the story is criticism of dependence as well. According to the narrator, her family was the main people in China Grove. As a result, they received the mail for the people that lived in that area. So the people depended on that family to receive their mail. You understand? So therefore, um, that is how the criticism of the dependence was mentioned in that story. It's a, it's a really, really great story. A really, really great story. And I enjoyed reading it. I learned a lot from it. But I would say throughout the story, the writer highlights and demonstrates the impact of jealousy as well that happens in most families, not just African-American families and not just, you know, white American families. But, you know, this can happen in any family. 
And the writer makes this opinion about the word by using her case with her sister. Throughout the story, the writer talks about the jealousy is the recipe of isolation and family. And I totally agree. Most people that are not happy with family members in their family, they kind of isolate and stay away from them to endure their peace, which is what sister did at the end of the story. She basically separated from her family because she saw that she could not get along with her sister and due to her not getting along with her sister caused her to not get along with her family because her family had complete favoritism over her sister. Now, Stella Rondo probably was jealous of sister because sister had the strength to get up and go and do the things she needed to do, like work and provide for the family. Sister probably had jealousy st towards Stella Rondo because she couldn't understand how she is there for the family, but they seem to love Stella Rondo more. It's never specified if one sister was prettier than the other. It just, in the story, it just basically identified the fact that one sister was treated better than the other. One sister did more than the other, but the family, the family way of dealing with the situation was totally unfair to sister. So she decided to live at the PO because she did not want to live with her family. And if she had to be at peace, she'd rather go and live somewhere else. And that is my intake on why I live at the PO. Thank you.